Hello everyone and I welcome all of you to online study for you a complete placement solution. This is Pratik Srivastava here founder of online study for you. Friends as you are aware Accenture is conducting the examination and prints lot of question basically were getting repeated in the examination. So it is very very important for you to solve the recent question asked in the examination. So friend today uh, 23rd of August there were many questions were repeated from 16th of August examination right. So anyway uh, today we, we will solve the question asked and I will also tell you which all questions were repeated. So even flow chart based questions right assumptions uh, statement assumptions. So that kind of questions everything we are going to do and even the other questions right because we will not be able to cover all the questions. So these are the questions which was asked today which you can see right. So all pseudocode and then your uh, you know from cognitive right. So a lot of questions are there. So all these questions basically uh, will be discussed and tomorrow we are going to upload in the Accenture crash course. So here you can see we are updating whenever the exams are happening like Accenture 16th of August 2024 questions. We had already updated our uh, pseudocode right technical MCQs. We had already uh, uploaded right coding questions right and in the live classes already I had covered or uh, the question which was asked on 16th of August so that we are doing it okay and also we are putting the questions right so you here you can see uh, these are the questions also which was asked that also we are putting it so if you have not got the Accenture course 8 the link is in description get it because there are a lot of questions which are getting repeated okay now friends uh, let us start with question number one okay so select the number from the given option that can replace the question mark so basically we have minus 20 we have minus 16, we have minus 12, we have minus 8, we have minus 4 and then they are asking what will be the next number. No problem friend. So see basically what they are doing in minus 20 they are adding 4 which will become minus 16 right. In minus 16 they are adding 4. So again it will become minus 12. See minus 20 plus 4 will be what 20 minus 4 is 16 because minus sign is bigger. So minus sign will come here. Minus 12 plus 4 will be nothing but minus 8 minus 8 plus 4 will again become minus 4 and minus 4 plus 4 will be nothing but equal to 0. So basically option A here will become the correct answer for the question number 1 right. So this is how you had to solve in the examination. Now you will be asking sir Accenture question is so easy. Yes if the question is easy right you have to practice that kind of questions. You cannot practice what you want right. See this is one of the question. Now 17 okay 43 there might be different different logic for the same question here friends right. So just wanted to tell you if you look at it right. So 2 cube plus 3 square. So this is nothing but 8 plus 9 will be nothing but 17. Then 43 so 3 cube plus 4 square. So 27 plus 16 it will be nothing but 43. So this is a logic for this particular question right. See for one question there might be uh, you know different logic as well I am telling you. 64 plus 25 it will be nothing but sorry uh, 89 it will be 89 here right so 89 okay and then 5 cube plus 6 square so 125 plus 36 and it will be nothing but so uh, you know 161 161 right so friends see if this kind of questions Accenture is not asking if even if you practice this difficult question it's of no use that's what I wanted to tell you. So practice what is getting asked more in the examination right okay. Now Prince next question question number two question number two is find the missing figure which follows the same pattern rule and mark it as a answer. Now so here we have two things friends one is our this box right. So uh, you know which is painted here and one is we have a dot you can say right. So let us try to understand their pattern. So friends in the row one right. In the row one if you'll see see two things we will be having one will be clockwise. So clockwise will be the direction in which the minute hour and second hand moves in the watch. Anti clockwise means opposite to uh, the minute or clock clock hand you can say right ok. Now here if you'll see so this is basically moving clockwise it came here then again it moved here. In this diagram if you'll see then again it moved here and then again it will move here right ok. So in this particular diagram it is here right again it will move here and from here it will move here right ok. So we have to find out the diagram where it has moved in this corner right. So basically this is uh, very much clear 
that now when it will move clockwise so this particular space is getting filled right this particular space is getting filled okay so this option is wrong and this fourth option is not visible leave it anyway now uh, out of this two one will be answer okay fine so why i am saying leave it because it is not visible and i have solved it okay so out of this one or two one will be the answer now friends then let us uh, try to find out the pattern of this particular one right so here if you'll see it is moving anti clockwise right anti clockwise then again it will move here it has come here again anti clockwise means it will come here so it has come here and then from here it will go there right okay now in this case in this case it it is hidden here right so from here it will come here and from here it will go there right okay that means so wherever this is there this is getting hidden over there right this is getting hidden over there so it is nothing but option b will become the correct answer for this question number 2 so this is how you have to analyze the figure based problem and then you have to solve it right okay fine then friends question number 3 then question number 3 so question number 3 is select the number from the given option that can replace the question mark so now we have 2 4 4 16 8 64 and 16 so this is a repeated problem so if you go here on the youtube channel right and if you watch the videos right so accenture latest exam question 2 days ago right and then accenture 16th of august 2024 question right and then again if you go back and if you watch this videos right so 9 days ago right even in the live section if you'll go and watch so friends uh, if you'll watch this video now then you will understand that whatever question has been asked you have already done it earlier right and you will be definitely able to score more okay fine so now uh, okay so in this videos also you can see many questions are getting repeated so now here you see so basically there are two series is going on right so see uh, it dip again depends upon the logic friends so 2 into 4 4 into 2 is 8 and 8 into 2 is 16 then 4 into 4 is 16 16 into 4 is uh, uh, 64 and 64 into 4 will be 256 right is there any option yes option 3 option c is the correct answer so let us marks so option 3 is 256 that's all done okay simple question then this problem is was also a uh, you know repeating problem so this is also a repeated problem friends okay so 4 7 25 9 12 30 14 17 35 and then what now here let us try to analyze so basically friends 4 plus 3 is 7 9 plus 3 is 12 and 14 plus 3 is 17 okay one logic then 25 plus 5 is 30 and then 30 plus 5 is 35 right okay and now and now friends one more thing which we have to observe here is so this 7 to 9 okay so this is gap of 2 this 12 to 14 gap of 2 right and then again if you'll see so 7 to 9 and 12 to 14 and then here it will be 17 plus 2 17 plus 2 will be 19 then the difference between next number is 22 and 35 plus 5 will be 40 so this will be nothing but our complete uh, series right but anyway they are asking the next number so that will be nothing but 19 option a will become the correct answer for this particular problem right so solve it in a very easy way friends the problems are not tough the only thing is we need to understand it like how we will be able to do okay and then it will become very very easy right okay fine next is friends uh, in a certain code language if you are not able to read you don't have to worry in a certain code language justice is written as k w b x n i l okay and then fortune is written as and then fortune and then fortune is written as g q u x z t l then they are asking what will be the code for balance what would be the code for balance right okay now uh, so in this case uh, like i always suggest you so go for right are uh, writing the alphabetical position 19 20 9 3 and 5 here k king 11 w so w 1 2 3 3 points 13 v 
टू पॉइंट ट्वेंटी टू एक्स फोर पॉइंट ट्वेंटी फोर नवंबर फोर्टीन चिल्ड्रेंस डे आई लुक लाइक नाइन लंच एट ट्वेल्व इन एस बी आई राइट ओके नाउ हियर यू सी सो प्लस वन हियर यू सी प्लस टू हियर यू सी प्लस थ्री हियर यू सी प्लस फोर हियर यू सी प्लस फाइव हियर यू सी प्लस सिक्स हियर यू सी प्लस सेवन सर इट इज वेरी वेरी क्लियर प्लस वन प्लस टू प्लस थ्री सो प्लस वन प्लस वन प्लस टू प्लस थ्री प्लस फोर प्लस फाइव प्लस सिक्स प्लस सेवन राइट ओके सो ई प्लस सेवन विल बी एनी वे एल सो एनी वे दिस ऑप्शन एंड दिस ऑप्शन इज रिमूव राइट ओके बी प्लस वन विल बी सी सो दैट इज नथिंग बट ऑप्शन टू सो यू डू नॉट हैव टू डील विथ ऑल दो थिंग्स इन एग्जाम यू हैव टू ओपन यूर माइंड एंड देन यू हैव टू सॉल्व द क्वेश्चन राइट फ्रेंड सी इफ यू आर नॉट थिंकिंग एंड डूइंग इन द एग्जामिनेशन then also you will be able to do i am not telling so if you don't solve this then you can't solve right no if you don't write this then also you can solve but the only thing is somebody is going to do it in 20 second and somebody is going to do it in the 120 second that will be only difference somebody will also try to find out the logic in this which is totally unrelated which is totally not required this logic why do you want to find it out from this first only you are able to see Plus one, plus two, plus three, plus four, plus five, plus six, plus seven. So same thing you apply here, and then also you saw the option right. At the end you want L, and at the beginning you want C. That's all is your answer. And let us move towards the next problem. This problem was little, uh, you know, good. So this is what I observed. So in a certain code language, okay. So in a certain code language, search. so in a certain code language search is coded as t e a s d i okay and then traverse is coded as and then traverse is coded as u s a w e s t e okay now so friends here there are two logics are there this is a very good question i will say so this is a very good question i will say so here basically two things are there let us try to understand one by one so if you'll see e is written like this a is written like this here a is written like this e is written e only and again e is coded as e only that means basically what they have done vowel is coded as it is right so vowel is what a e i o u so vowel is coded as it is and what about consonant so s plus 1 is t r plus 1 is s c plus 1 is d h plus 1 is i t plus 1 is uh, u s t u r plus 1 is s b plus 1 is w r plus 1 is s s plus 1 is t that means vowel is as it is okay as it is and consonant and consonant is and consonant is plus 1 okay and consonant is plus 1 now here you see pre order right pre order pre order so wherever you have vowel first write it as it is o o e e and then e e so you see third and fourth letter is e o and last letter is e last okay uh, sorry last letter will be so anyway uh, sorry so last letter will be r plus any anyway, consonant is there so r plus 1 is s d e okay r s r s and p q right so it will start with q okay so any anyway, this option is wrong so q s q s that means this option is also wrong so q s e o q s e o s e e s option a will become the correct answer for this particular problem so vowel remains constant and a uh, consonant increases by 1 that's all done and you will be able to get the answer okay fine now next question now next question is uh, again a number series problem 468 455 469 454 and 470 and then what right so friends see practice more okay solve some test series so here you will be also having 10 mock test okay coding cloud and networking verbal ability ms application pseudo code reasoning everything is there right cognitive ability and content is see i have told you earlier also we have two best content definitely so accenture crash course and then we have tcs nqt crash course just go for it okay blindly 
seven ninety nine eight hundred rupees not a big deal here. See, uh, if you get one pizza, large pizza, so that will only come you around five hundred to six hundred rupees, right? And this might give you a package of four point five lakhs per annum. And also later you might be able to regret. Don't do it. Okay. So get this crash course, start learning, right? And trust me, uh, you know you will never regret that. Okay. So this course, right? was not worth okay so each and every penny of your money will be more than worth so this has actually content for more than 5000 rupees but we are just giving you in 799 rupees itself okay now let's see so the link is in description don't miss 8 minus 5 is 3 6 minus 5 is 1 okay so this is minus 13 i will put because it is reducing and then here 9 minus 5 is 4. So this is plus sign. Okay. Again, it is reducing 5 and uh, 6 minus 5 is 1. And then again, if you'll see here, so 10 minus 4 is 6, 6 minus plus 16. Okay. So here basically now it will be minus 17. So 10 minus 7 is 3 and 6 minus 1 is 5, 453. Is there any option? Yes, sir. Option D is there. So option D becomes our correct answer, right? Okay. Now, friends, next is nothing but sitting arrangement problem. Sitting arrangement problem will be a little tricky. So let us try to understand and then we will do it. So seven people are sitting in a row. Seven people are sitting in a row facing north. So uh, I will always write. So I always ask you to make uh, two lines basically. Always, right? I always recommend you to make two lines so that the confusion will be less and you will be easily able to solve the problem. So seven people are sitting in a row facing north, but not necessarily in the same order. It is known that S is sitting second to the left of Q and third to the right of T. Now, so let me place Q here. So S is second to the left. Sir, why did you do that? Wait, please wait. I'm just trying to find the possibilities. I also don't know where they're sitting. So when the question is given to you, what you will do? You will start experimenting, right? So you will start putting and then you will realize that, okay, whatever you are doing is right or wrong. Okay. So you will have to start something doing or setting. Okay. 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 It will not solve your problem. Right. Okay. Now, so uh, S is sitting second to the left of Q and third to the right of T. So third to the right means T should be here. Then a one, two, three, third to the right of T and S is second to the left of Q first left, second left clear. Okay. Next, next diagram, sir, I want to make it like this. Now tell me it is wrong. It is not wrong. You have two possibilities. It's okay because here also S is second left to Q and S is third right of T. Is there any other possibility? Now I am asking. No, there is no other possibility. No, there is no other possibility. Fine. Then they are telling P is neither adjacent to S nor to T. P is neither. That means P is not sitting near to S, not sitting near to T. P is not sitting near to S, cannot sit here, cannot sit here. And P is not sitting near to T. Where P will sit, there is no option left. So this will become false. This will become false, right? Okay. Now, P is not sitting near to T. P is not sitting near to S. Then where is the choice? P will sit here, okay? R is neither adjacent to T nor Q. That means R is not sitting near to T. R is not sitting near to Q. That means R is cannot sit here. R cannot sit here. So there is only one place R will be sitting here. That means R is not sitting near to T. R is also not sitting near to Q. R is sitting near to S. What is P position with respect to R? So from R, if you will see, then first right, second right, third right, and fourth right. Bhaiya, P is, bhaiya, P is fourth to the right of R. That's all is your answer. So this particular question will become correct and you have already solved it, right? Okay. Don't forget to friends, please comment. See, uh, actually when you comment on the videos, no, then uh, I know I feel that, okay, you guys are understanding, you guys are utilizing and that is what is the appreciation because this video is completely free for you, right? So if you comment, if you like, that gives us a lot of uh, motivation to bring more and more videos for you. See, today only the exam was there. I was searching the question from morning when I got the question. I am making a video for you all right. So it takes a lot of effort guys. So don't forget to comment uh, if you like the video and don't forget to like it. Okay, next. 
print seven people are sitting in a row everywhere seven people are sitting if seven people sits means you know it will be little uh, tricky okay but anyway follow the process always whatever i'm telling you three four five six seven now seven people are sitting in a row facing north but not necessarily in the same order three people are sitting to the right of n so it is very very clear put n here then only one second first second third so three people will sit right to the n here also i will make it so that see why two diagrams sir are you mad <laughs> no yaar see always i take two diagrams so that you will not have any confusion things will not get messed up easily you will be able to do right see already so many problems are there in life man my life your life everyone life has problems so we have to try to at least you know reduce the problems three people are sitting uh, to the right of n m is sitting somewhere to the right of p and somewhere to the left of n p is sitting third to the left of j okay so p is sitting see friend two things are there m is sitting somewhere to the right of p and right and left of n okay so p m n should be here that means p and m should be somewhere here now p is third to the left of j so i have two choice now so p is third to the left of j so let me put j here so first second third p will come and sit here okay now what is the second option i have second option i do not have it only because see j you can put here if you j if you put here then p will come here but m is sitting right m is sitting uh, after p and before n so that is not possible there is no other possibility if a, is there any possibility you let me know in the comment section there is no other possibilities here okay now so definitely m will sit here that is done neither p nor j sit adjacent to k so k basically you can say k is not sitting near to p and j so k will sit here what is the question so what is the k position with respect to m m is here if you'll see first second third fourth again it got the same answer here fourth to the right option d you have to uh, basically fill it in the exam and then come back and it will be definitely right now this is a flow chart problem <coughs> and friends this problem was basically uh, you know it was same uh, thing which is getting repeated here right and you know the answer also it will be 24 dollar because in the previous exam uh, previous question previous videos we had done it right okay now so read the provided flow chart carefully to answer the following question so from here you have to start okay and then uh, you know bill amount due days so they are telling mr robin paid his electricity bill okay so bill amount of 120 dollar okay after 20 days from the due date due date is nothing but 20 days okay now find the penalty imposed on him find the penalty imposed on him for the late payment of the bill now so then flow chart you please move start and then you got the data and then please move are due days more than 10 days yes sir it is more than 20 days so we have to go yes is bill amount more than 150 dollar no sir bill amount is 120 dollar it is less right then it is no so follow this then penalty will be equal to 0.01 into bill amount will be 120 dollar into days is 20 so this two zeros will take off this two zeros and p will be 24 dollar so 24 dollar anyway if you are confused in the exam with decimals and all 12 into 2 will be what 24 just tick and come your your problem is not to find out where you have to place the decimal and where will be the decimal right so forget about that next is a question from the topic syllogism okay all applications are solution very good so all the application all the application are solution and all the solutions are innovation and all the solutions are innovation okay so all the applications are solutions and all the solutions are innovations right okay now next is friends some innovations are application so friends 
you already know when you say all a are b then you can easily say some b are a some b are a so when you say uh, some innovations are when you say all applications are innovations you can easily say some innovations are applications right okay all solutions are application no all solutions are not application if you say all solutions are application then it should be like this but in this diagram it is not like this so conclusion two false right so some innovations are application correct all solution are application wrong so only conclusion one follows you had to tick option one and come back right okay now next is friends is a question from a statement assumption right okay so here what they are telling so a food technology company reveals an innovative machine that is capable of transforming discarded plastic waste into ed edible protein bars okay so friends a food technology company reveals that a very innovative machines is there that can transform discarded plastic into protein bars which can be easily eaten so friends few things you can only say that or uh, if the food technology company is telling that they have a innovative machine capable of transforming then it will be definitely safe and secure because they have to go through lot of standard process right so we have fasai so you have to take lot of permissions that okay it is safe and then only you can make uh, you know this protein bars from the plastic second thing friends if you are making a protein bar and you are saying that it is uh, edib edible right that means it is very very clear that it can be safe to eat right and it can be easily eaten right okay so this by seeing only you are able to i have not seen the options now now we will go and see so the conversion process is safe and produces protein bars suitable for human consumption yes that is what is that is what has been told also in the statements right okay friends that's all for today and now uh, nitin sir will be uh, taking the coding things from here so one second before i go i wanted to tell you friends so get this accenture crash course as soon as possible tomorrow we are going to add accenture 23rd of august 2024 more number of question thank you take care and now let us start the class with coding so hello everyone and welcome to online study for you a complete placement solution so in this video we are going to talk about the accenture coding problem which were asked in today's examination that is on 23rd of august so it is being asked in today's morning shift and that's why it is going to be very important video for all of you guys who are preparing for accenture examination or who have accenture examination recent times okay so let's start with the very first question that we have and let's discuss the problem first and then move to the approach to solve it okay now the problem statement you can see on your screen it is stated that it is question number 1 so actually two question have been asked so this is the first question and it is saying the question uh, named as rebound height okay and the description as follows that daniel has a ball okay he wants to find the ball's rebound height which he dropped from a height h with an initial velocity v after the nth rebound the final velocity of the ball will become vn your task is to help him find and return the integer value representing the height to which the ball rebounds after and bounces so it looks like to be a physics problem that we used to solve during our engineering period or during the j preparation period but the problem is being framed in such a way but we have to write the code to execute this problem now let's understand so this problem is pretty simple and straightforward it is saying daniel is a some guy who have some ball and he is present at height h from the ground let's say this is the ground he is present at a at height h and from there he drop the ball first okay with a velocity of v now ball will come down and when ball will come down after hitting the ground what will happen he will ball will rebound back now it will rebound back but its velocity will slightly up decrease that we have learned in the physics concept that i am going to not discuss up here whatever will happen to it so v is the velocity with which daniel is first letting the ball go to the first rebound now it is saying after the nth rebound nth would be any number so after nth rebound that means after touching ground for n times 
the ball will rebound back again. So this is the first rebound. Again, it will go back and come down. It is the second rebound. And this will go on till the nth time. Now at the nth time, whatever will be the velocity through which the ball goes will be denoted as Vn. So V is the initial velocity. Vn is the velocity of the ball after the nth rebound. And at is the height through which Daniel is leaving the ball. Now what our task is just to find out the integer value representing the height with which the ball rebound after n bounces. So we have to just tell him that what is the height at through which Daniel have dropped the ball. Now, what are the help that we have been given in the note? You can see the formula has been given like this, that h dash, okay? Because after rebounding, the ball will not go to the same height. It will go to some different height. And from that height, it will go again, rebound back and it will go again. So this will happen generally, you know, we have learned these things in our physics concept, but it is saying h dash is equal to h into e to the power 2n. So exponential to the power 2n. Now what it says us that h dash is a rebound height. H is the initial height in this particular formula or expression. And E is the coefficient of restitution and the number of and is the number of bounces. Okay. So N is actually number of bounces. It is some mistake here. Now, what is E to the power N? How will we calculate E to the power N? So we can calculate E to the power N by V upon Vn. So E to the power N e is a coefficient of restitution. To the power n means number of bounces is being calculated by v which is initial velocity through which ball is letting go by daniel upon vn that is the velocity at nth rebound of the ball so these are the formula that we have been given and we are going to use this particular formula to solve this particular problem now let's see what is in the input type we have been given so you can see the input format will be like this the very first input is height h the initial height Next input is V, the velocity through which the ball is letting go at very first time. And a Vn is actually the velocity at nth rebound. Now what we have to take, tell him that what will be the height actually reached by the ball at the nth round. That is actually the task. Let me see it again. So our task is to find the return the value of the height which ball rebounds after n bounces. Yes, after n bounces, what will be the height that ball will rebound? We just have to tell him. So let's see how the output is coming here. You can see that for the same input, 10, 20, and 5. So that means for this, we have an input of H has 10, V as 20, and Vn is 5. Now, if we use this formula to calculate the value, the value would come like this, you can see. So initially, the value of H is this. So what the formula that we have? Here is the formula to find h dash. We have to find h dash. That means at nth rebound, what is the height? For that, what is the formula? h into e to the power 2n. Now we know about h because this is the input that we already have. In this case, you can see. Now we just have to calculate what is e to the power 2n. Now for that also, we have a formula that we have a formula for e to the power n. So for e to the power n, we have formula that v upon vn. So if we have to calculate e to the power 2n, it is nothing but e to the power n whole square. Simple. It is clear now. It is just these things. So what we have to do? V upon vn whole square. This is just the formula. So instead of this, while I'm writing this formula, instead of this, I just have to write v upon vn upon, of a square. So we know all these three values. So we can easily calculate hn using this. So the task is very simple for this particular problem. You just have to derive this formula and just put the values in this formula and you will have your answer. So let's do the same here also. So the value we have, h value is 10, v value is 20 and vn is 5. So let's do the same here. So h is 10 multiplied by v is 20, vn is 5 upon square. So 10 into 4 is square. 10 into 4 is square is nothing but 16. So it is comes to be the total value as 160. So the output of H dash will be nothing but 160. So let's see the output. Yes, it is coming to be where it is the 160 for that particular case. Let's do the, uh, the same for the ne next input that we have. For the next input, the value of H is 16. The value of V is 5 and Vn is also 5. So for that, the formula of H will remain same again. That is H into two, uh, H dash will be H into 2 to the power N. 
So we have already derived the formula of two e to e upon two to the power n, which is nothing but v upon v n of a square. So h is sixteen. V is what five. What is v n? Five again. Take the square. So sixteen into one square is nothing but just the sixteen. So again, the output will be coming as sixteen. So you can see on your screen the output is coming as sixteen. So what we have to just do? Just take the input and put this formula. Not this, but this formula, and you will have whatever the answer you will get as the resultant will be your answer. Just the simple code as it looks. Okay, so let's go to the compiler quickly and do the same. Okay, so let me go and write the code. Okay, I'm writing the code in C plus plus. I think the question is pretty easy. So whatever language you are using, to there will be no problem uh, that would happen to you. But if you have any problem, comment down. We will try to resolve that also. Okay. So using name space std. Okay, let's go. Okay, integer of main. And now in that, what I'm going to do? Let me take the value. The first input is h. Next input is v. And the, again, the next input is v n. Okay, let's take the same name so that it looks familiar. Okay, you can name it as anything also. But yeah, v n. Okay, so we have taken everything as input that is being required. Now, in the answer, what we have to do first, let the answer would be what h multiplied by v upon v n square. Okay, so let's do the same. So it will be nothing but h and h is multiplied by v upon v n. Multiplied because square is what two square means two into two. So the thing is being multiplied by two times. We can use the par function also here, but that doesn't change my answer. So let me do it here, and whatever it would be, it will be stored in my answer. And let me print my answer. Okay, and let me check whether it is giving me correct or not. Okay. So the input will be what h is in the very first test case. Uh, the h is. 10, 20, and 5. 10. The next value is 20, and the next value is 5. Let's see, 160. The correct output is coming. So it is actually a pretty easy code that you can easily do in two to three minutes. And now, if you are wondering why so much so easy code is being asked in Accenture these time, because when you look at the next code that I'm going to show you currently, it that's why then you understand. Okay, they are going. They are just needed to balance the difficulty level of the problem. So if for the first question is very easy, then there might be a high chance that the next question that comes to be would be in the slightly difficult level because they have to uh, frame the question in such a way so that the student can able to solve both the code in a definite time frame, which is given in Accenture examination to be 45 minutes. So you have to keep in mind, you have only 45 minutes to solve these two questions. So let's go to the next question, which is actually a very interesting question to discuss. So let's discuss it here, okay? Uh, I'm going to discuss first the brute force way that you can think very easily. Okay. And then we are going to uh, talk about the optimized way also. And then the time complexity, all the thing we are going to discuss it here. But let's go quickly and read the question out. So the question number two, you can see it is saying the name of the question is quest of the hidden code. And now the description is as follows that in a remote village, there existed two mystical string named as S1 and S2. In these string was hidden a secret encoded in their character. So till now what we have understand is so that there is a story is being framed around that in any, any remote village anywhere, there existed the two string. The name of the string is written here as S1 and S2. And it is saying in these two string, the characters of the two string is designed in such a way that it encoded a certain secret code. Okay, now what is our task here? So your task is to find and return the integer value representing the encoded secret of the string by finding the sum of ASCII values of the characters in the longest common substring between these two strings. Return zero if there is no common substring. Let's try to understand it. This is the most important part. Now, what we have to do? 
So we know about the story that, okay, two string is being there and these two string is formed in such a way that they encoded some secret message. Now we have to get that secret message and that too in the form of an integer value and how we will take the integer value through the characters that encoded the message. So we have to convert the characters through the ASCII table. Now, what is the ASCII table? We are going to discuss at the end because that is not the priority up here. The priority is how we are going to get up that particular character encoded code. So that particular character encoded code is nothing but the longest common substring between those two strings. So we have to find nothing but longest common substring between those two strings S1 and S2. And whichever is the longest common substring, we have to get that first. And after that, we have to convert each character of that particular substring using the ASCII table into its integer value or decimal values and then add them all and get our answer. So that will be the case. So let's find out how to find the longest common substring because that is the main problem. If you are able to find out how to find the longest common substring between the two string, then everything would be pretty easy in that code also. So let's find out that. Before that, let's see some notes here. So the notes is being mentioned as that string S1 and S2 contain English alphabet in lowercase only. That means all the character will be in the English lowercase. Lowercase means small a to small z. All the numbers should be in this range only. All the characters should be in this range only. Now, if there are multiple longest common substrings, so there could be a chance that there could be a multiple longest common substring. That means there could be two substring of the same length because longest means longest of the length. Let's say of three length, there are two particular common substring that we are able to find in a uh, what you could say, uh, two strings in between two strings, then which we have to follow up. So it is also mentioned here that we have to be the that substring which occurs first. So we have to consider for our answer the substring which occurs first. So this is again a very important thing that we have to keep in mind while solving this problem. Now let's, I hope you understood it. So let's go to the input part and let's try to understand it from there on. So the input will be like this simple input. The first input will be the string S1. The next input will be the string S2. Now what we have to find the longest, sorry, longest common substring. Okay, so let's do it. Let's do it quickly. Let's try to understand it quickly. So if you look at that example here, so the example is the first string is adventure. Okay, and the next string is future. Now, what is the substring? Let's try to understand what is a substring. So substring is nothing but a part of a string. We could call a substring as a part of a string where the if you take that part out, then from the starting index of the substring till the end index of the substring, no uh, character should be missing. What I'm telling you, if you take an example of A, B, C, and D, you could say A, B, BC is a substring. Yes, it is a substring. You could say BCD is a substring. Yes, it is again a substring. You could say ABCD is also a substring. Yes, it is also a substring. But if you say ACD is a substring, no, it is not. Because from the starting position till the ending position, you could say we are missing one character in between. So it is not said to be a substring. So substring is a part of a string where all the elements from the start to beginning of that particular substring should be in the contiguous order. Okay, so continuity among the characters order should be maintained in the substring. So these things you have to keep in mind. Everything will be simple. Uh, you would also imagine the substring will be similar to the subarray part, which we have taken in the array things. So let's go and try to solve it. So if you look at these two strings, the S1 and S2, how you will find the common substring? So what is the very first thing comes in your mind? How you will able to find out? Let me again write it in the more clear way. So add when chair and few chair. Very good. So what you will do at very basic, we are talking about the brute force way. Okay. So you will compare these two first, whether these two are equal. No, it is not equal. So now what you will do? So you will start comparing because you have to find common between two things then you will start comparing between them from the very first beginning okay so what are the chances that you have so what are the total possibilities that you have 
So the possibility is only three possibilities. Total three possibility could happen when you match the two characters within a string at put any particular index. The possibility is very simple. Let's say if both are match, if both are match. One thing is both are find a match. And the other possibility is both with characters we are comparing, both do not, okay, sorry, don't match. So these are the two possibilities that at first we can, would, we could see. So let's see this, which possibility is happening currently. So if you compare the first, very first characters of the two string, then you would say, okay, the, these two characters are do not match. So where it will go? It will go up here in this range. So it will not match up here. So now what you will do? Now what you will do? So if it is not matching, if it is not matching, so you will again search for next next thing. No, if it is not matching, so you will not end your search here because there are remaining characters to be there. So yeah, you are going to search for the next. But while searching for the next, the thing that you should keep in mind that you do not increment the both together because there could be chance that this could be matching with this or this could be matching with this. That means it could match diagonally here. That means let's say if there will be a case, you will increment the D and there instead of F, there could be a D. Then this could be matching. So you cannot, when there is no matching, you cannot just go in a way that you will increment both of them together. You cannot do that. Instead, what you will do, you will have now two possibilities from this path. So here you, so total three possibilities among. So one possibility will happen here. And when you go there, there is two possibilities. So what are the two possibilities? You will increment the first string. You will increment the index. You will go to the next character of the first string, or you will go to the next character of the second string. So if let's say I will increment, I, I will uh, represent the index of the first string and J will represent the index of the second string, then what will happen? Either you will increment I plus one or you will increment J plus one to find a new string, new substring. Okay. You will now have to find the new substring because you haven't find yet. You haven't find yet. So you have to find the new substring. So these are the two possibility. These are the two possibilities. And whichever among these two possibility at the end, will return the maximum that will be the maximum among them too. Because whenever I talk about the number of possibilities, number of way that we can form from a particular time, then it seems to be a recursive problem and it is a recursive problem because here there are multiple possibilities that we have to keep in mind and we have to go to at each particular situation. There are multiple possibilities that could happen. And whenever this kind of question is informed, whenever it kind of question could be formed, we have to go with the recursive approach. And these things we have discussed in our Accenture live classes. So if you are already enrolled to that live classes, then it will be helpful for you already. But if you are not, you can also check out that class. In the live classes there, we have discussing these kind of concepts so much up there, okay? So now there could be two possibilities. I plus one will be incremented for the first string. I plus J plus one will be incremented so that the second string could be moved. So this could be a possibility. So now, so this is the possibility when it will not, not match. But when it will match, like when it will match, you could see uh, when it will match, it will be F. So when you reach here, when your I reach here and J reach here, then it will be matching. No, there will be some condition when I will be here and J will be here because we are moving to all of the possibilities. Then it will be a match. So when it will be a match, then what you will do? Then there is only one possibility. Since it is matching, go to the next. Go to the next. Go to the next, go to the next. Then when you are ma matching, then only you can move your I pointer and J pointer together because these two are matching. Let's go and search whether these two are matching or not. If these two are also matching, then ch check whether these two are also matching or not. So this is the continuity of the substring that we could follow. Okay. So when these two are matching, then I plus one and J plus one. This is the incrementation part that thing would follow. Now, what about the count? That how we, we could consider that what is the length of the substring currently we have at that particular point. Okay. So whenever we are found a matching, our count or length of that substring 
will incremented by one and whenever we do not match any count then we again have to reset the length of this reset the length to zero why it is so because now since the substring is being break no let's take an example a b c d and a b d c excellent so these two are matching okay so we have found one substring the length of the substring is one these two are matching the length of the substring is two these two are matching no it is not matching so when the no, there is no matching then you would have a new substring from now on when there is no matching so now this substring which you have already been following is have no uh, what you can say say on the new substring that would be formed now because this is not the subsequence thing it is substring in substring you cannot miss any part between the two end point so you have to consider all so whenever you find a point where your uh, character is not matching so you're now the previous substring is now going to end so what we have to do we have to also create because we need to find the maximum length of the substring then only we could find whatever is the maximum substring because here we need to find whatever is the maximum substring amongst two if you look at it the maximum length of the substring is four which is ture and ture and actually ture is uh, is the resultant maximum substring common substring that we could form here this could be our answer in this question okay so i'm telling you all of the possibilities up here that you should follow while you are solving this problem so these are the possibility that you have to keep in mind now what we have to do now what is our task now how we will go to code it so these are the tasks that we have to keep in mind and after that these are the, all the possibilities or ways that we have to keep in mind. But now what we have to find, we have to find the sub common largest common substring. And for that, we are creating whenever we are counting the size of the substring by one. So whenever the count will now become zero, we have to compare before uh, changing whenever this will happen. So we are count will become plus one so we have to compare it with the maximum length that we have so we will create a maximum length variable in which we have we have to store what is the maximum length of the latest largest common substring that we currently have and if we found a new substring which is more lengthier than the substring that we currently have then what we have to do we have to update it we have to update that also and with the updating that we also have to mark that at which point we actually encountered the maximum length substring because if we know let's say at e at t whatever the maximum length substring that we have encountered where it has been started so it has been started at point two if we have marked that that at t actually the maximum length substring at this will be four in this problem and it has been started at t so we could easily find the substring starting from the t till the length till total length of four so we could add the four character through it and that will be our substring in that particular problem so this is the logic you we have to apply up here okay so let's go to the coding part and let's try to code it the brute force approach and then we will move to the optimized way so the brute force approach if i will go here what is the way that i have to put it let's understand okay so the input type will be nothing but just the two string so the string s1 and string sorry s2 will be the two string that we have to take as input let's take this two string as an input also s2 also since we have taken all of them now we have to call a recursive function and now the task is begun that what will be the uh, argument that we have to pass along with the recursive function how we will decide that so we have to first look for what is our requirement up here accordingly we will decide no that what is we have to pass up here okay so what is our requirement what we need to have as we have discussed we need to find the largest common substring up here okay so let's try run one case so let's this is a larger one let's try to get one case like a b c d and a a b c let's take this two string s1 and s2 okay and try to understand because this is very important now if you look at these two 
start from i equal to zero and i equal to zero. Okay, so this is the starting case. So what we have to do? These two are equal. Yes, these two are equal. So these two are equal. That means my count will increased by one. Let's say we have a count variable. So we need to have a count variable. We need to have a count variable, and our count is increment by one. And max length is currently zero. Okay, and the starting index. Okay, the starting index or IDX we can say of that particular substring because that would represent. Then only we could find what what which is the maximum. Uh, which is actually the maximum substring length. Okay, so this is just to happens to be a zero. Let's assume. Okay, let's assume it to be a zero. Now what I am going to do? So these two are equal. Yes, these two are equal. So our count will increment by now one. Count is. So whenever my count will be incremented, so this condition will be happens to be whenever I go to this if condition, I have to compare with my max length. Okay, my the new length is actually greater than my max length. So I found a new new uh, largest common substring which is of length one. Since I found the new largest common substring, I also have to get to know that what is the starting point of this particular substring. So the starting point, how you get to know the starting point because this the length is one. So the starting point formula would be nothing but just the simple thing you would have to do. Uh, what you can do here, the correct index, let's say i and j, whatever the string you could take. Okay, whichever string, no problem. So let's take the string one index. So i minus the max length plus one. So this is to find the starting index of that particular substring. So you can say i is what i is currently. Uh, zero and minus one plus one, which is nothing but zero. So zero actually is the starting index of this particular substring. You can also see for the starting one, the starting index of this particular substring is zero. If we ended up here, so we could have this substring as our answer. But since our operation is not ended here, so what we have to do now? We have three possibilities. So one possibility because we have encountered this, so there will be one possibility also. That possibility is increment it, increment it. So one possibility, both are been incremented. This is one possibility. Other possibility is the first is incremented. The next possibility is the second is incremented. Clear? So when both are incremented, do we find anything? No, we do not find anything. So our count will be reset to zero. Both are not equal. Again, the next possibility is the first is incremented. So when first is incremented, the second left it here. Do we have any matching? No, we do not have any matching. But I'm only talking about the way where we found any answer. Let's see it. So when the pos third possibility when i is remained same but j is incremented so when j is incremented then these two are equal so these two finds to be equal these two finds to be equal so again our count will again will become one again compare it with max length no it is not the new length so we do not have to update anything because the max length is still same with the count but now when you increment a again and this again incremented so i will incremented by one since you have found two and j is also incremented by one. So again, you found equal. So b and b are equal. So count will become two and max length will now become two. And what is the index according to this formula? So index according to this formula will become i is what? Uh, i is actually at first index. So one minus, let me raise it, one minus the max length is two plus one. So one minus two plus one, if I'm not wrong. Uh, so it will become what? Uh, it will become nothing but two and zero. So index will become zero. Okay, index will become zero. Now again change it. Again change it. So go to the next value. It will again go to the next value. So now again equal. So count will become three. The max length will again become three, and the new index will become uh, sorry two minus three plus one which is nothing but again zero, again zero. So index will again remains to, remains to be zero and the max length is three. Now we have ended up. So when is the end condition will happen? When you're either of I or of J or both of them would reach the end of the string. So when we reach the end of the string, which is the base case. So now we have to end our operation for this particular way. 
and this will be the answer only you could find go to other way also check other way also but at the end the max length will become remain as 3 and the starting index will remain as 0 this is the starting index is for s1 we are considering so what we have to do now how to find the string go to s1 the s1 is this start with the starting index which is this the character is a take the three character from there because max length is three that is a b and c so this is the longest common substring for these two strings you can see so in this way we are actually getting our answer so i have dry run one code so that you could understand it so now let's go and do the same up here so what we required only we required two things the first thing is the max length variable which actually hold the max length among the all possible ways and the other one is the index which hold up the starting index of that particular max length which is b our answer now let's call the recursive function from here let's call the recursive function so and whatever that recursive function will return we will store it as our answer so solve uh, int so now in this what we have to do first we have to pass the starting index of both the uh, string the i j which is 0 and 0 at the beginning and along with that what we have to find uh, pass the two strings s1 and s2 and along with that the max length will also pass and the idx will also part and one more thing will be passed that is zero which is the current length zero is what the current length of that particular uh, it will actually hold up the current length of the particular what you can say way which you are on to okay so this will hold up that so let's do and write the function code for this particular function so the function name is solve the recursive function i'm calling and in that, uh, let's say the I will iterate over the string one, the J will iterate over the string two, and let me get the string one and string two also. And also the max length and also the uh, IDX, I would say. And on the top of that, let me pass the count, which hold up the count for particular that particular uh, iteration that we are on to in a recursive call. Let's go and do the same for it. And now let's do, do what the, in the recursive call. The first thing is the base case. The base case we have already discussed. The base case is very simple. If either i is equal equal to s1 dot length, that means it will either I will reach the end or the I2 will reach the end or whether both of them will reach the end together. This is the end case. And the end case will represent what? Okay, okay, okay. Just once. So the end case will represent what? We just have to return our count from there. Whatever the count we have, just return it from here. Okay, now clear. Okay, so now the case will happen. Now we have to look for if the base case will not happen, then we have three possibility. The very first possibility is that if S1 of I is matching with S2 of J, if matching, if the characters are matching, then it is simple. You will have to increment your count by one. And on the top of it, you also have to increment both I and J by one, one index. Okay, so let write the function for that. So I will be incremented by one, J will be incremented by one of the string S1 and the string S2 and the max length will pass as same. The IDX will pass also as same and count which hold up the count for particular iteration will increment by one. So we have done this and now let's store it somewhere. So let's store it in the count already. We have created it. So let's store it there, whatever it will return after its recursive call because we are calling a recursive function from here on. So whenever it return, it will return to count. And now we just have to compare that whatever the count will return, whether it is greater than if count value is greater than max length, then we have a new 
largest common substring. So we have to update our max length also to count. And also one more thing, we have to update our IDX and the formula of IDX is just simple. I minus max length plus one. So this is just to find the starting index of that particular longest common substring, which we have stored in our max length at that particular time. So this is the thing, but let's assume if it is not the case, okay? Or even if it is the case, or if it is not the case, it will depend upon the if condition, but the rest of the two case will always run for each possibility of the index. And that will be simple that you will have just the count one will store. Okay, let me create two variable again. When you increment the i plus one, that means increment the character of i. If not matching, then you have two possibility, whether you increment the character of S1 or increment the character of S2. So I will represent the character of S1. So whether you represent the character of S1 and uh, whatever the answer you will get from here. Okay, let me write down the function first and the max length would be there. Clear. And also the IDX is also there and count will become zero. I've told you, you have to now reassign the count of the substring to zero because now you have to form the new substring from the scratch again. Okay, and the count to will be the new uh, the second possibility. You will let the i as it is and increment the j. That means increment the character of s2. Okay, and pass the all as same. So max len idx and the zero. Now, since we have passed the th all three condition and the th all three conditions value will be stored in count, count one and count two respectively. So at the end, at this possible index of i and j that we are passing, we have gone through check all the three possibilities and from all the three possibilities, whatever the value will return after the recursive call will be stored in three variables. So we just have to get whichever the maximum amongst them. We have to return that only. So what we have to return maximum among these three. So how to compare the maximum among these three? So maximum on the count. So let's compare the maximum among these three only. So whatever the maximum among these three would be our answer. Okay, so this will do for all possibilities of i and j. And after do checking all the possibilities of these two substring, we have in the max length, this is the maximum length of the common substring. And in the IDX, we have the starting index of that particular longest common substring after doing everything because we are updating it every time whenever we find any new result that could be our answer. So that is being returned here. So answer is being returned with the maximum length. So answer will contain the max length. And what actually uh, the content by you could say IDX, so IDX will hold the value since we have passed IDX along the starting index of it. So if we have to know the string, so the string is nothing but a string temp. Let me create an a string temp. And that would be S1 dot SUB STR. This is a function to draw a substring or you can write a substring from that particular index also. The starting index is IDX and the length is max length. So we have a substring. So let me first get you know that whether we are getting the correct substring or not, then we are just have to convert that substring to using the ASCII code to the integer value that we want to print up here. Okay, so let me print the substring first. Okay, this is not the input. Uh, the very first input is adventure and the next is future. T U R A. What output we are getting here? T U R A. It is the output. It is actually the largest common substring that we want to get. We are getting it. Now what we have to do here? We haven't have to print it. Instead, we have to print, change each character into the ASCII value and then print it. Now, what is the ASCII table? So ASCII table is nothing but is a table uh, notation in which each characters or each notation, each special character, everything have its own value. Each characters, let's say A have also a hexadecimal value also and a decimal value also. But since we have been told to change the answer into integer format, so we have to only look for the decimal formatting value only. Okay, you can see here, we have to, uh, what we have to do? 
integer where it is saying ask i value finding the return the integer value you can say we have to return just the integer value that's why since we are getting t u r e so there are four character namely t u r e so we have to change each of them to a integer value so what is the ask i in uh, using the ask i table what is the value of t so if i have remembered so it is nothing but 116 okay you can check in the ask i table also so t have a value 116 u have a 117 from a to z if I would say you A has 97 and Z have 122, B have 98 and so on. Whether you are incrementing the character one by one in alphabetical order, its value will be also incrementing by from the previous by 111. So since T, U, so T have 116, U have 117, uh, R have what? R have 114 and E, A, B, C, D, E. So E should be a value 101. So if you add all of them, the value comes to be what? Uh, you can see here the value comes to be 448 so when you add all of them the value comes to be 448 now in c++ simple type casting will happen just we have to type cast the character into the integer format and when you type cast the character to integer it will be type casted using the ask I table value so what we have to do we let me create an integer val which is initialized as zero and now let me go to each character of that particular string and in that what i'm going to do the auto iterator will point to the c will point to each character one by one okay not the string but the string name is as temp inside the string name temp i will go to each character and at each character i'm adding it to integer variable c will be added and at the end so all will be character will be type casted to integer value then it will be added here and then I will print the value to you. Okay. Let me print it. Okay. So now you can say I'm getting the correct output as 448. So this is the code. Okay. So this is the code. We, what we have discussed in this code, we have just looked for all the three possibility that would happen at each point of time. And we are going to all these possibilities, you can say. And amongst all the three possibility, whichever is the maximum, that will be our max longest common substring, substring at each particular point of time. And also you could see this is just since we need not need the length of the maximum common substring we need actually the substring which is maximum common among them all that's why we need to have to compare this each time so that we need to have the in starting index of the longest common substring within these two when we are comparing these two substrings so that at the end when we got the substring we could change it in into the integer value using the sky table formatting and we will have our answer so this is the code this is the recursive way now if i look for the time complexity since let's say there will be n will be the size of s1 and m will be the size of s2 okay so for each element of the s1 we are running for three times so total three to the power n will be the time complexity we are running for s1 and three to the power m we are same running for s2 and both are multiplied because we are comparing with them both and so the total time complexity you could say m plus n or n plus m whatever you could say it is the time complexity so you can say exponential time complexity is coming to be here so it is actually very large if you would say if you would only compare the five length element so three to the power five time would be the resultant output so let's assume for a hundred length string then it could be so large okay so it will be very large i would say so that's why we are saying even this is the correct formatting this is the correct code this is the correct process but we used to not do this that's why we shift from recursive method to the dynamic programming method so now we are going to discuss the dynamic programming method look i can directly tell you the dynamic programming method also that would also work for you but i just want to explain you that how actually the recursive way work and then you are going to understand the dynamic programming way in a much detailed manner okay so let's go to the dynamic programming method there i will say the java and c plus plus code both okay now let me go to the dynamic programming method but before going to it i just want to share with you guys if you really want to prepare for accenture in a detailed manner because you can see the kind of question they are asking is actually very good in these days okay so i would say you should 
enroll to this particular course, you will find the link in the description. All the thing that you require to prepare for that, everything, every course material, everything amongst on the top of that, we are conducting the live classes on the daily basis. All the thing will be provided to you just in rupees 799. So go and check out this once if you haven't it yet. So let's go and discuss the optimized approach. Okay. So the optimized approach is nothing but we are going to use the dynamic programming DP array. Now, what it tell us, so what we are going to do, let me write the same. Okay. Let me take one example. The example I would uh, take for the same ABCD and AABC. So ABCD and AABC. Let's take the example for the same. No. And now what I'm going to do here. So what actually is the say here? What is the logic? that we are going to apply, how we are going to apply it here. So we are going to represent these two in the form of a 2D array. And how we are going to implement these two in a form of 2D array. So let's say the length of S1 is four and length of S2 is also four. So we are going to create an array of 2D array of five cross five. Let's create it. You are going to understand it very soon. Okay, let's create uh, an array of five cross five. So one, three, four, five, two, three, four, and five. Okay, now one, two, three. Okay, it could be more. Four and let me go one down also. Five. Clear. Now what I'm going to do, if you observe very clearly, the thing I'm going to uh, make you understand is what is the uh, approach that we are going to do. So let's create, let's name this array as DP of n plus one and m plus one and, and, and m will be the considered as the size of s1 and s2 respectively. Now the logic which I am implementing so th since this is are the arrays. Okay, so the index will be zero, uh, zero index, uh, one index, two index, three index, four index and five index, one index, two index, three index, four index and five index. So these are that. Now what I represent, you can uh, make s1 or s2 any one of them as a row or column that would not hinder your answer. So let's make all the character or spread all the character of S1 into the row. So A will go here, B will go here, C will go here, D will go here. Okay, it will be done. Okay, not the five. Starting from zero, only this is the five. Let's create. And now in the same way, this will go here, A will go here, A will go here, B will go here, and C will go here, not the five. Now what is our task? What do we have to do here? Now, what is the logic that is being applied here? So it is saying, it is saying nothing but index, 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 let me raise it. So it is saying, just a simple case, please try to understand it within five minutes, everything will be clear. So please focus for the five minutes. So what I'm telling you, the logic is in this array, we are going to compare each index one by one. From A to A, we are going to compare. From A to B, we are going to compare. A to C, we are going to compare. A to D, we are going to compare. Now, since it is a substring, so in substring, we know we are going to add plus one to the substring only when both are matching. Both are matching. Since we have seen that in the recursion way. Here also the three condition will work. We will add only one to the substring when both are matching. When both are not matching, then what we are going to do for that particular thing, just zero. Both are matching plus one and both are not matching, simply zero. Because now you have ended that particular substring here. Now you have to find from a new substring from there on. So what is happening here? Initially, what will happen? Please listen to it very carefully. So initially for the zeroth index, everything will be zero. Why I'm telling you? So for the zeroth row and zeroth column, everything will be zero. Why it is so? Because for the zero row, you can see no element is present. So there will be zero length of your substring that you could form because this is actually empty value. So for empty uh, characters, you could not form any substring. So the substring length will be zero only. Now let's compare this A with this A. That means this is the row column. Let's say compare the uh, column with I and row with J. So this J and this I will be compared. This J and this I will be compared. Both are same. Both are same. So when both are same, increment by one. Now, to whom you will increment by one? To whom you will increment by one? Look your diagonally. Look your diagonally. 
why you are looking so you are going to understand it so so if you look at your diagonal why it is happening if you look at your diagonal you will find okay it is zero so zero plus one will be one that means till this when you are let consider a a b c and d a a b c so till this point you only have a one substring which is these two are equal so this is coming correct now when you compare a with b a with b so that means you are comparing this a sorry not the this a this is s2 so this is for s2 this is for s1 so s2 a with s1 b so s2 a with s1 b are they are matching no they are not matching so when they are not matching just zero do they are matching a and c no zero do they are matching no zero okay clear go to the next i'm checking for each possible index so what each cell will represent so let's say what this cell will represent the maximum length of substring till this point from b to c till this index what is the maximum length of substring that it will represent only okay so now go to next value now a will again compared with each character so here you, what i'm doing for each character of one of the string i'm comparing with everyone so a will be matching with a yes a will be matching with a so what i have to do increment it by one but i have to look it diagonally why i'm looking so diagonally let's understand it what is actually happening there so actually a b c d is a string which is this and a a and b c is a string so when i am here i'm comparing it, it with this it with this i'm comparing it with this so what is the length of the substring that we can form now one only because this and this will form only one substring currently so that's why it is coming to be one and since i'm looking at diagonally out of it now when you reach here ab is what ab is what ab is not matching zero bc is matching no no matching zero matching no matching zero but when ba is matching does b and a is matching no zero but bv is matching now look for it why i'm checking for diagonal when b and b is matching then i have to check the previous of it is already matching or not so what is the when b and b is matching that means this index b and b is matching then i have to check the previous of it which we a and a you can see which is diagonal of it it is matching or not yes it is already matching so now length will be increment of substring by 2 you could see when these are matching then i have to check whether the previous of it are matching or not understood that's why it is diagonal check up here in the dp approach now b and c are matching no matching zero c b and d are matching no matching zero similarly c and a are matching no c and b are matching no c and c are matching yes c and c are also matching so we have to check up diagonally the previous of it the substring which is could be previous of it with c and c you could go back to it go back to it you will find b and b what is the maximum uh longest common substring that we could get through b and b so you could start here you would add one to it but you want to know what is the maximum length just previous to me it which is two so i have to add one to it so it will become now three so c and c you will have three now c and d you will again have zero so now if you look at the table whatever is the maximum whatever is the maximum amongst all the value in the cell of this 2d array is the maximum is the longest common substring so this is the way in which we could find the length of the longest common substring but our task is not just to find the length of the longest common substring we also have to find that at which particular index actually it is being starting off so whenever we are updating our length so we have a max length also here through which we are comparing so whenever my max length will be compared i will have to update that particular index so this index have two value row and column also so we have to update the row and column and at the end we just get to know that what is the row and column that means at which index we have find the maximum length so in this case we have find the maximum length at this particular index so what we have to do what is the length of the maximum length which is 3 so we just get all the values diagonally 3 go up Go diagonally go and three go up whatever is the value so these three are the maximum common substring so these are what c these are what p and these are what a so a b and c are the max longest common substring you could find easily here so this is the dynamic programming approach 
here just what we have done we just follow this diagonal approach to find up that the logic will again will be the same here again the same logic is being implemented here again but what we have done we could optimize it here we could not have to look for all the just in one go we are going to find the longest common substring so this is the benefit of dynamic programming approach okay so let me go and uh, code it also in the compiler and then we will discuss the time complexity of the same also okay uh, let's go include i will show you the java code for the same also i know this is slightly difficult problem that is for sure but yeah i try to make you understand as in simple word as possible okay clear so let's go up here and now what you have to do what is the task we have to make a 2d array but before that let me first take the input Okay, when I take the input of int, sorry, not int, but string of s1 comma s2, and let me take input of s1 and s2 as well. Okay, we have taken everything as an input. Let's go. Now the task is begin. We just have to find out what is the value that we could get up here. Okay, so the value that we got. For that, we first have to take up the length of the two string s1 dot length and also s2 dot length. M will represent s2 dot length. And now let me create the 2D array. Sorry. Uh -huh. Why should it type in instead? Okay. Vector vector of vector of integer and the let's say the name of the DPRA will be n and the row size will be n, let's assume, and the column size will be m. We could take it as anything as per our requirement. Sorry, not n and m, but n plus one and m plus one. Okay. N plus one, the size would be incremented by one. We have discussed this also. Because the zero row and column, we will not take it because then the first value will coincide at the same point. N plus one, and then vector of end of m plus one, comma zero. Okay, let's assume. Now let's cut up. So we have created the DP array, and each index will be marked as zero up here. Okay, in the previous question, we did not have to be look at the base case. I think we have missed the base condition when we have to return zero. Okay, that will be already been up, but let's go up there and we are going to discuss that also. But for now, uh, what I'm telling you, we have created a DP array in which we have to get it. Now we just have to be create and max length. Okay, which will actually hold up the max length and we have to create the row equal to zero initially and int column is also equal to zero because that will represent what that at which index is, we found the maximum common substring so that we could get ultimately the actual max like longest common substring so, and then we only change each character to the sky value that we have done earlier okay so we need to do that that's why we are making it up and now we have to go into the 2d array starting from the index one okay and i will be lesser than and equal to n and i plus plus i'm iterating to each column and int j is equal to one and j lesser than equal to m and j plus plus okay so i'm iterating to each column now i will represent the index of s1 so what i'm doing here if s1 the same condition will be there if s1 of i minus one because i of the particular array will represent from I am representing from one based indexing and the indexing of the string will be starting from zero bit. That's why in the minus one is just to manage that thing. Okay. And equal equal to S2 of J minus one. Okay. Now if it is clear, so let's go up and do the same in the DPRA. What I have to do with that particular value of I and J, since it is matching, I have to do what? Add plus one with the previous to it. What is the previous of it? It is just a diagonally index, diagonally equal index of it, like for it, whatever is the pen. 
So for this index, we have to add one to the previous diagonal index or previous diagonal cell of it. Okay, we have discussed it also that why it is going coming so, but we are doing it here. And now we just have to compare since we have a new value up here. So we just have to compare that if the max length is less than what we currently have in DP of I comma J, then we have a new longest common substring and we have to update it into the max length also. So let update it. And also we have to update the row and column. The row will be, sorry, the row will be I and the column will be J, clear? So this is the approach that we are following it. Otherwise, if let's assume it is not there, if it is not matching, then we know what we have to do. Just mark the DP of I comma J very simple up there equal to zero because now we have to start the new substring from this point of view point. Okay. So this is the logic that we have applied here. So when we come out, we just have to go to the, uh, the condition where we have to return the zero that we have missed in the recursive way. So you could do that. Just you have to check if max length will remain as zero, then what will be your answer? It will be nothing but zero because when, when we re you return zero only in the case when you're you do not find any common substrate and then only your max line will remain as zero. Otherwise it is being updated somewhere. Now, so this is the case. Otherwise, if it is not there, then you would have an answer. So how to find that answer? So for that, let's create a string temp, which it initially marked as blank. And now what I'm going to do since I'm adding in a previous manner, we can see first C will be added then B will be added then A. So it will be have to be in, added in reverse manner. So since string have a concatenation property, so we can do that. So we can add it in the reverse manner. So how we are going to do it here? So let's go and do it till the time you will not encounter till the DP of a row and column will not become zero or the max length will not become zero. You could mark it as anything. Because when the DP of row and column will become zero, now your substring have to end that you have been taking currently. So what you are doing now, you are just adding into the temp, sorry, the temp plus temp is equal to DP of mm, row or you could say the S1, S1 of whether for S1, we are considering row. For S2, if you are doing, you are just considering the column. It will not affect anything, okay? Row minus one, because we have discussed it, the 2D array is start with one based indexing we are considering and the string where the character will hold up actually will be zero based indexing. So that's why we are doing minus one here and on which we are adding the result. Sorry, not result, but temp. Why we are adding temp at the end? Because I've told you, we want to add in such a way. So when C will come, okay, C will app. Now when we will come, we have to add the B Okay, here only C because we are going in the opposite way. So it will come after it. Okay, so the value will come after it. That's why we are doing. And now since we have the value. Okay, so what we have to do now. Okay, now one more thing. Sorry, I have to go to the next diagonal index and how we will reach here. Just in decrement the row by one and column by one because we are moving up in the diagonal position in the 2D matrix. So this is the way in which we could do that. Now, since after doing it, we have that in the temp, the exact log, log uh, sorry, longest common substring that we required. So what we have to do now, just create a variable, which hold up to zero, the same thing. And now do a for loop to run over, uh, the, to run over each character of the temp. And at last, And at last, just in the val, add the C. Okay, so we have converted it into the integer value. And now just print that value. Okay, what is happening? Just print that value. C out answer. Okay, let me run it and let's check. Okay, okay, some problem is there, not the answer. So if not the answer, what? Okay, sorry, not the answer, but the val. Okay, okay, again some mistake. Any typing mistake has been happening. 
Okay, you see, I'm getting the correct answer as it is being said in the problem. So this is the dynamic programming approach. Now, what is the time complexity of it? If we discuss it, because the time is already been so much because this problem is very good actually. That's why I try to explain it as in simple but as possible and as and though as time I could take. But yeah, so the time complexity is simple. I'm going to each in, uh, in the matrix, which is of n plus one size and m plus one size. I'm going to each cell of this matrix one time. Okay visiting every cell one time. So time complexity will be n plus one multiplied by m plus one, which is nothing but simply n into m. So you can see from three to the power n plus m, we come down to just n cross m. So it is far better approach than this. But yeah, we have discussed both of the approach, whichever will fit you best. Go up that. Please try to understand the brute force also, then it will be very easy. If you understood the brute force, then this dynamic programming will be just easy way. Just we are doing the same thing just here. What we are doing, we are all the, we are checking all the three possibility in only one go. The two possibility is just managed in this way that if it is not matching, the two possibility is just changed to zero. If it is matching, then the same way that would happen in the recursive call would be happening here also. So this is the code that I want to discuss with you. Hope you like this video. If you have any still any doubt, comment down. We will try to uh, solve that up as soon as possible. Okay. So that is all from my side to this video. Just the last thing I would want to again request you go and check out this course. This would be very helpful for all of you.